If you're a fan of feta and crazy for ouzo, then this Greek themed cocktail party is perfect for you. Skip the toga but reach for a Santorini surprise, a drink that blends fruit juices with Greek ouzo and mint. We've enlisted professional help and traveled to Cuisina Restaurant to learn how to make kefteris the proper way. Greek salsa and an easy but delicious panacopa to round out the Mediterranean fare. Decorate your house with stunning orchids and mason jars, play our Greek music soundtrack and entertain guests with a casual celebrity game and before you know it, you'll have brought Greece right into your living room. Opa! Zeno, who is one of the owners of Cuisina here in Dedham Square. How long have you guys owned this? We've been here roughly six years now. Six years, okay. Uh, best Greek chicken wraps in the entire world. True? Okay. It's true. But today, <laughs> Zeno is going to be helping us make, yeah, I can't say them right. Gefteris. Yeah, I don't say it that, that nicely. Um, <laughs> so these are Greek meatballs. You are going to absolutely love them. Okay, but you got to show us the secret of what we're doing here. Absolutely. Okay, do it up. What do we got? Okay, we get about a uh, pound and a half to two pounds of ground beef. Now, you can use beef. We use beef. You can use lamb. You can use pork. You can use any meat you want, even uh, turkey or chicken. Okay, all right, but we're going beef. But we, we, beef uh, it up. We prefer beef. All right, I like beef. Okay, so to the, our beef, we're going to add about a half cup of breadcrumbs, plain breadcrumbs. Okay. About two tablespoons or so of water. All right. About half a cup, maybe a little more, of finely chopped onions. About a quarter cup of fresh parsley. One egg, salt and pepper to taste, roughly about a teaspoon, of, uh, tablespoon, sorry, of each. A little dried garlic, and very important in Greek cooking, oregano. Also, we're going to add about a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Okay. Greek olive oil. I was just going to ask, is it Greek or Italian? Obviously. <laughs> and our secret ingredient, which I won't. Oh come on! We gotta leave out something. Fine. Okay. Well, you know, as long as we get these for the party, I guess it's all right. <laughs> and uh, we're just gonna knead this up. Oh, see, in my kitchen, I, I'm right in, but I guess we shouldn't really do that here yeah, at Cuisine. Health department. Uh -huh. and stuff yeah. like that. Buzzkill. <laughs> can you can you Go give on. me one one ingredient in the secret ingredient? Secret oh, is there red wine vinegar in it? <laughs> The secret ingredient is one ingredient. Oh, <laughs> so much my investigative yes. skills. <laughs> yeah. So now, can we do small ones that'll be good for like yes. a like? Because yours are usually like you medium. Can, you know, you can make oh, them any tennis. size basically. Yeah. Just roll them up, and you want to you know feel your meat. If it's a little sticky, you can add some more breadcrumbs. Okay. Just a little bit more. Don't don't overdo it, but because then they become all dry and nasty. Yep. And it seems like we've pretty much nailed this. Okay. Now. How we cook them is we uh, char grill them. Okay. But you could, in a skillet, a little olive oil, fry them. Comes out very nice that way as well. You get the nice crust on them as well. Okay. Or you can uh, throw these in a pan and boil them in the oven. Oh. Our preferred method, of course, is char grillium. You get the nice smoky flavor. Let's nice do it. Crust. We have our patties made. I like to make them nice and flat because they do clump up a little bit when uh, when you're cooking them. So these are more like little hamburgers. They don't look as much as meatball-y right, as I right. thought. And because you're cooking them at you know, fairly higher heat, you want them to cook thoroughly. That's why we make them a little flatter okay. as well. Okay. Now we're just going to smell it up. <laughs> People are usually surprised that it's uh, ground beef just because of all the flavors. Yeah. And they always just assume it's There's lamb, lamb in there. It has more I thought it was. I thought you did like some ground beef and some ground lamb. Mm -hmm. Do you and ever you do that? Do, um, uh, we don't. We just we just. I don't think I grew you would taste it. Using just beef because yeah. you know, thirty. Uh, 
years ago, it was hard sure. to find. I wasn't lamb around yet in yeah. the United States. Really? It wasn't that popular back then. Yeah. Really? So my parents coming from Greece, where they would eat lamb and, and yeah, and so like, and there was no beef in Greece, so they couldn't have it. So had to kind of. <laughs> <laughs> this is cheap lamb. Ah, look at that. Voila. Can't, can't, can't say it again. Keftedis. There we go. Much better that way. <laughs> Ooh, it smells delicious. <laughs> Zen, are these, are these the best ones you ever made? Best ones I've ever made. Okay. Just for you guys. Thank you. Are you going to put it in your. You dip it right in there. It's a ziki. Yeah, I wouldn't say that right either. It's a secret ingredient. Oh my god, these are so good. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Okay, well, now that we know how to make kefteris, I don't know how to say it. Well, what goes better with a Greek meatball <laughs> than a nice Greek cocktail? Now, what we've decided to do, um, this was kind of the cocktail Mount Everest for me, Jen. Ooh. Yes, Ooh. because um, I am not a fan of ouzo, but I figured if we're going to do a Greek party, we have to use ouzo. It's a must. So I took it as a challenge, and I think I've come up with something that you're going to like. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Yes. Can't so. Wait. What we do is we start it off by making cantaloupe juice. Not Which smells <laughs> delicious. It really does. It smells really good, oh, very fresh. It's summer. And it's gorgeous looking. Isn't that yeah, pretty? Really pretty? So all you do is you peel the cantaloupe, cut it up, throw it in a blender, and puree it. Then what you do is you, you pour it through a sieve and just kind of mush it oh, down okay. so you get rid of like the kind like, of a... Like chunks. Exactly. And then you get really this juice. So you get this really pretty little cantaloupe it's juice. Beautiful. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah. Now, I'm going to recommend a whole, whole, whole <laughs> lot of ice on this one. Again, the reason why, reason why we're um, dumping on poor Uzo here is just because it's not a huge fan favorite. Well, it is for the people... Look at uh, Zeno. Zeno loves True. it. He's Greek and he, he's like, you don't need anything but ice. Ice and Uzo and you're set. I don't like black licorice, yeah. so that's why I'm not a fan, but for people who love black licorice, rock on with Uzo. You got that right. So um, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to, whoop, let me see, actually do you want to start throwing a few yep. ice cubes in? We are going to do six ounces of the cantaloupe juice, and this is going to make two cocktails for my friend Jen and me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and as I said, I, I was testing these last night. Cocktail testing night is always a fun <laughs> night here at Studio 27. I might even put a little bit more in. And, uh, and I ran it by my husband. And at first he was like, ooh, I don't know. But then we doctored it up a little bit and we like. Fantastic. Um, okay, so now the ouzo. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do two ounces of ouzo. Um, and you'll smell it, yeah. So as I said, my, my <laughs> plan... <laughs> My plan was to make this as universally satisfying okay. as I possibly could. So we are going to juice about one and a half lemons or about two ounces of lemon juice. Yeah. yeah. And you can do it to taste. I mean, if you taste it and you think, oh, I want more lemon, yep. add more lemon. That's totally. what it's all about is, is doing it to your taste. Exactly. And actually, we did add a little more lemon just because, again, it like the fruitiness. Citrus cuts, cuts the licorice flavor. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay, we'll just juice that in there and then we're ready for our next, which is a little Greek honey. Nice. I was pulling in as many things as I possibly could. Um, which uh, came from Greece. Lemons. <laughs> Hello. I don't know about cantaloupe. I kind of fudge that one. <laughs> That's okay. But so we're gonna. I think the Greeks will forgive you. Exactly. So we're gonna do about an ounce of the Greek honey. Okay. And that sweetens it up a little. So okay. we're now gonna stir this up and stir it really well because the honey is kind of thicker uh, than everything okay. else. Okay. Now, if you wouldn't mind. Pouring those to about, about we'll, no, okay. we'll do that. That's how we're going to garnish. Right. So if you would please pour that, uh, here we are, um, pour that in about two thirds of the way, okay. and and then you're going to top it with, uh, yeah, here we are, with ice ice accident. There we are. And then what we're going to do is top it with a little. Here, watch this. That's how there that works. Go. Okay. Thank you. I think you're probably good. No, okay, that's good. Sorry. Yep, that's okay. And then you want to top it with a little bit of seltzer water. Oh, okay. And then a little trick when you are garnishing things with mint. If you do this, it kind of releases the oils Seriously? in it. I Would I lie? <laughs> Would I lie, folks? She's beating okay. the mint. Here, yeah, beating the mint. Yes. So you just kind of do that a little bit. Smash this. 
Men's and Protective Services at the door. You got that right. Drop that in there. And oh, here you good. are. Oh, okay, so for me today. this is your Santorini surprise. Okay, Jen. All right. Give it a whirl. Let's yeah. see what you think. Isn't that kind of yummy? That is yummy. And you know, you smell the ouzo and you get really a little bit it. of an aftertaste yeah, of it. But I don't but mind it. No. The cantaloupe and the lemon cut that really sharp flavor. To, you're right. It's just a tiny little aftertaste. So, That's really nice. Yeah. Mission Impressive. accomplished. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, so <clears throat> while this is not authentic Greek, so uh, disclaimer. With the kephtetis. That was good, right? Nice, Thank very you. nice. Yeah, we, um, we did authentic Greek. We so did. Now so we're this doing is easy cocktail party Yes, this is, this is a great little appetizer based on a spanakopita. Okay. So a spanakopita, I'm sure you guys know, is very labor intensive. It's got a lot of phyllo dough and, and basting of butter and whatever. We're doing the um, cheater version, if you, to basically call it what it is. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's walk you through this. It's really easy and um, you'll see for yourself. So to start with, what we have is um, one big bunch, it's about 16 ounces of um, spinach cut up nice I use baby spinach I like baby spinach I do too yeah much bigger fan yeah. of baby. and then five eggs that I've beaten if you just want to throw that in there together Alexandra this is kind of like a quiche <laughs> it kind of is now here's the secret ingredient and it also makes this a little bit lighter in terms of calories um, we're using cottage cheese and what you want to do is get the small curd cottage cheese and that's what's going to give this it, this is going to be a little bit spongier as opposed to a heavy spanakopita so oh. we're yeah so we're going to throw in one big old I have to say I never knew that there was here. a difference between curds yeah I, 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 I'm, I'm not a big cottage cheese person uh, nor am I it nor am I it's it's better than using what's traditionally in a spanakopita, which is a lot of heavy cheeses and stuff. This um, makes it a bit lighter. So we're going to use one and a half of these. Okay. So you want to do the other one for me too? Sure. And then while you're adding that, I will also add a pinch of pepper, which is always good. Should you say a pinch of pepper <laughs> when you do it? <laughs> Paprika. you can do when your yeah. sisters. Um, and then a dash of salt as well. Da, 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 da. If you want to start mixing that up, that's great. I will start mixing. You this. betcha. Um, a little splash of garlic powder. Never hurt anyone. Oops, I might have been a little heavy handed there. That's okay. Garlic good. Garlic good. <clears throat> and dried basil. This doesn't require a lot of fresh herbs because it's going in the oven. And um, How much dried basil, roughly? Uh, I'd say I went a tablespoon on both. Okay. Yeah. And then the last, but not least, is the feta. So feta. I'm going to do about half of a container like this, and this is crumbled feta. So it's all going to mix in very nicely. And then the other half we're going to use in our other dish. Oh, solid. Yeah. So in fact, there's a big wooden spoon there, if that would help you out a little bit more. You know what? <laughs> no. Or not. No. Oh, one last thing. Um, you don't have to add this, but you can add a little Parmesan in too. Just, you know, as much to taste as you're liking. I'll do the one more. Like there we go. Oh. And this is your base for the Spanakopita. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, and here's where we're, I mean, this is cheating, but what we're about to do is really cheating. <laughs> so, what we've done is we've, cheater, total cheater, um, we've taken our good friend Pam, where'd you put Pam? I put Pam away. I need Pam again. Oh, again? Good I need boy. Pam. Go get me Pam. Pam. Hang on. <laughs> that Pam, she's always disappearing. You give her one cocktail, she never comes back. Yeah. She loves herself some Santorini surprises. Okay, so, and you want butter flavored Pam. And we've done the inside of this here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take about six or so sheets and just lay them down. But they're like paper things, so you kind of have to they, be careful. Well, actually, who cares if It doesn't breaks? matter if you break. It's not like it's a, um, a pie crust or anything like that. And even then, a pie crust, I have no I problem with it. I break those all. I broke one yesterday. <laughs> now, what you do is you take your good friend Pam and you spray her hey, on. Pam. Hi, Pam. <laughs> And it's, it's butter flavored, so it's as opposed to laboriously going back and forth with a stick of butter. Now I want you to put about a quarter of that in there. Okay. And just flatten it out. And so we're just going to repeat this. We're, it, yeah, you layer it just like you would a lasagna. And then when we get to the top. Okay, well, hey, don't yeah. ruin the ending. Oh, you're right. Jeez, okay. So show us how we do that.
Okay, now for the last layer, you want to end with the phyllo on top and just kind of put that on. And then what we do, like every good cheater, we finish it off so it looks authentic with about a tablespoon oh, of there butter. You go, yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, real butter. Sure. Yeah. And then you just want to coat that on the top. And we're going to put this in at 325 degrees for about 45 minutes to an hour. You don't want the top to get too brown. And if it does, you can just throw a piece of tin foil over it. Okay. But um, some people cut this before they put it in the oven. Be a mess. I, that's what I, I've, I've never been a fan of that. So I like to let it come out and let it cool for about 15 minutes because it's going to be super hot. And then cut it into squares individually or triangles if you feel feeling extremely authentic. Well, but you have to really, really, really let it cool. You I let it cool so it right. sets. Okay. But don't forget, we've got five eggs in here, so it's going to make it uh, a little bit solid. And then serve it around as individual um, appetizers. All right. Delish. Off I go. Okay, so now we're going to make what we're calling Greek salsa. You have every yeah. kind of salsa available. I do. Basically, but it's great because it's just chopped up stuff. That's all it is. That's what I mean. Salsa can basically be called the salsa of leftover stuff I found in my fridge. Little known fact, in Mexico, <laughs> when you say salsa, it actually means crap I have in my fridge. Yeah, exactly. No one, no one else knew that. Mm -hmm. Well, this is Greek salsa, or so I say. Opa! So there. <laughs> And um, so what we have here is we're starting off with some red onion and you know my trick because I've already said this on air but if you put a little bit of vinegar in some red onion and let it sit for a minute it takes the bite out of it um, so it makes it a little bit more mellow which is great because we needed a tablespoon of vinegar in this anyways along with a tablespoon of olive oil. Oh, Boom. Fantastic. This is what's going to give it the Greek kind of sauciness. Done. Um, not me. <laughs> with that the one chopped and minced clove of garlic. Okay. One avocado, chopped up finely. Okay. But not mushed. Ooh. No, never. Nobody likes a mushy avocado. No. Nope. Okay, what's next? What's next is um, a pint of cherry tomatoes, Drop chopped up. Okay. Grape tomatoes, actually, that's what I went with. Um, next, oh, about three quarters of a cup of um, pitted calamata oh, olives. Oh, oh, oh. Good lord. It's hard. Yeah, it's very hard. Cocktails are strong. She's not used to the uh, Not that? usually. Um, I love to go heavy on parsley just because it gives a really nice mm -hmm. fresh taste. So this is about a half a cup. You could go less. It's up to you. A tablespoon of chopped oregano. Fresh oregano though. I know we used dried stuff in the previous, but this one calls for fresh. Okay. Last but not least, our beloved feta oh, that we had left over. What would from a Greek party be without some Really feta? wouldn't. And there she goes. So what you're going to do is just toss this as Alexandra is doing so beautifully. I really am. Yeah, it's amazing how you do it. I don't know where, you, it's a gift, it's a family trait, frankly. And we're going to serve it with homemade pita chips, which we showed you how to do on our very first episode. We did. And it's on our website, or you can buy the store-bought kind, whatever you prefer. And I like to let this sit in the refrigerator for about an hour before I serve it, but we're going to put it in the lovely plate for you right now. And it's delicious, and it's super easy. Do you mind if I just test it? I don't at all. A little bit? And I want to get... I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. I am very excited. I love Greek salsa. I know you do. Yeah. So there you have it. Greek salsa. Boom. Okay, now we're going to set the atmosphere. And I like to do that um, by imbibing a little. Now, I think they taste like a good and plenty. Remember those? I do. Yeah. Okay. You're being good. I know that these are not your I favorite. I don't like licorice. I'm yeah. just, I'm, I, but I, it's not bad considering, no, it's right? Not. If I liked licorice, I would probably love it. I just don't care yeah. for licorice. Not okay. my bag, baby. Not your bag, baby. Okay. So flowers today, we are actually giving a huge shout out to one of our newest sponsors, our floral sponsor, Whole Foods. Um, and you know, think about them when it comes to buying flowers. They have a beautiful selection. They are actually pretty appropriately priced. Otherwise, we couldn't be going there. Um, so yes, so what we did was... Wait, can we, we also didn't give a shout out to the Fruit Center. Also, yes. all those awesome olives from their Ooh, awesome olive bar yes. that I spent thousand dollars on. Yeah. So we'd like to thank them once again for providing us with the food for all of our segments. Exactly. Um, we love our sponsors. We really do. So, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with some blue salvia. Um, and we're going to be uh, putting things in mason jars today. So okay. um, you take one of these little mason jars okay. um, and just, you want to cut your salvia down a little bit lower. 
um, you know, just yeah, take a bunch of them and toss them in. Okay. Um, and again, these are going to serve as, um, th this is kind of your filler and this will keep everything standing up straight. I actually was researching all sorts of flowers that are found in Greece and they're very um, spring-like, like, like um, uh, Narcissus, you, wouldn't you think? But don't you remember the whole Greek mythology thing? <laughs> yes, I, I know there's a joke in there, I just can't get to I it. I know, yeah, it's okay, we'll do that later. Off camera. Um, but um, daffodils, things like that. So uh, agapanthus, that's another one, and it means something in Greek, and I'll ask my Greek friend Patty later on. Um, These but, are pretty. Aren't they beautiful? What are they called again? These are called blue salvia. And you don't have to go to town, just enough to kind of like fill it all in. Um, then what we did was we got some white spray roses, which will just serve as actually kind of a funny, another little filler. I'm going to give you a few of these. Um, and, uh, and these will just fill in nicely. And one of the things that Whole Foods is actually, they do a great job with, is um, they do a lot of floral arrangements in mason jars like this. So that was where I thought it would be kind of a nice little thing to do. Okay. So now we've, more? oh, sorry about that. Oh, and I hope you like the Pepsi, <laughs> Pepsi <laughs> not uh, a sponsor. base. No, not even remotely a sponsor, but I was going to um, dress things up and um, get a nice glass thing. But Jennifer said, no, she likes the Pepsi because it's very much like us. How we roll. Yeah. So boom. Um, okay. We also did some Gerber daisies, uh, add a few of these in. You just kind of keep turning things around. You're doing a very nice job, by the way. I know you're always, I you know, know upset with yourself. You, know that. you stole my scissors. What's that about? Sorry. Um, and again, if you're going to have big colors like these Gerber daisies, put them in odd numbers. They're much more okay. visually appealing to the eye. Um, we have a few of these purple freesia. Smell. Not pretty? Hmm. Yep. Um, and you do these. And then actually one flower that is found in Greece that we can get forever around here, and Whole Foods has a ton of them, are the gorgeous orchid. Now because this is our real kind of thriller of a flower, I only like to do one. One in each one. I think if you put in too many, it's just going to get kind of obnoxious. You know what I mean? Okay. So. I'll take your word for that. What do you think of this? I think it's beautiful. I, Aren't these beautiful? I even like mine. Yeah. We forgot some flowers. Oh, well you know what? We've got tons. These, we can. These. Oh, you want to throw some of those in? Yeah, what are they? This is... I'm so good at this. She doesn't listen. <laughs> These are the freesias. Freesia. I just went like this. Remember? Okay. Rewind. Oh, doesn't that smell nice? Oh, Does this all sound... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Oof. You. Anyway. Uh, sorry about that. Are you going to take these? Grabby. Huh, okay. So, now, our, um, our game. I, uh, I said to Jennifer she is going to like this game. It's... Um, it's not exactly a, uh, you know, a real mind-bending game, but it is called Greek or Not So Greek. You're going to hand these out to all of your guests. Go on our website, greaterbostongallagirls.com, click and print them out, hand them out to your guests in the, ahead of time. And what we're doing is we're just picking out a bunch of celebrities and asking you if they are Greek or not so Greek. Okay, ready? Uh, Tina Fey, Greek or Not So Greek? Greek. Greek, nice. You know, read her book. Uh, Kelly Clarkson, Greek or Not So Greek? Not Greek. Greek really? of Greek descent. Do not know. Uh, Kristen Stewart? Uh, not Greek. Not Greek. And little tip, Betty White. Greek. Oh. Who knew is right? I know. So it's just kind of a fun little conversation yeah. starter for everybody before they get everything. If you could grab our um, our CD, our uh, music CDs, these are awesome. And we have got all of these different songs like Carcillamas. Uh, Don Samaj, all things I can't really pronounce, but you no. know what? You will know them when you hear them. Let me really? just say that. Yeah, it's like that. You hear it at every Greek wedding, let me put it that way. Okay. Um, so check them out. A lot of Zorba the Greek soundtrack <laughs> songs as well. <laughs> My big fat Greek wedding. Yeah, there's a few of them on there. Yeah. So everything you have here, your meatballs, your cocktails, your flowers, your spanakopita, everything. It's the easiest way to throw a fantastic Greek cocktail party. And with on a that, on, yeah, exactly. And with that, we say any excuse for a party. Cheers. Cheers. Opa. Opa.